Good morning students. Today we are going to understand chapter 14 Water in our life and based on our understanding we'll do the book exercises and question and answer of this chapter. Students along with air and food water is also one of the basic things which is required for any living thing to remain alive. Almost 70% of our body contains water which controls the body temperature helps to digest food transports body waste and lubricates joint water found on earth can be broadly classified into two types fresh water and saline water fresh water is the drinkable water which is found in ice caps glaciers lakes rivers streams ponds and below the surface of earth whereas saline water is the salty water which is found in seas and oceans this water contains a high amount of salt and so it cannot be used for drinking let's understand more about the fresh water sources the sources of fresh water can be broadly classified into three main categories rain water surface water and underground water rain water is the main source of fresh water on earth it fills rivers lakes ponds etc now what do we mean by saying the sources of surface water students rivers lakes ponds are all sources of surface water river is the largest source of fresh water that flows over the surface of earth rivers are of two types snow fed or perennial rivers and rain fed rivers snow fed or perennial rivers are the rivers which are filled up by the streams formed by the melting of snow in the glaciers they carry plenty of water throughout the year for example river ganga yamuna and brahmaputra are all perennial or snow fed rivers whereas rivers which carry only rain water are called rain fed rivers they have lot of water during rainy season but they dry up during summers krishna Kaveri and Godavari are some of the examples of rain fed rivers. The next source of fresh water is ground water. It is the water which is present below the surface of earth. It is basically the rain water that soaks into the soil and is stored in the tiny spaces between rocks and particles of soil. This water is taken out by well, tube wells and hand pumps. It sometimes comes out as natural springs. or as an oasis in deserts now students let's understand what are dams dams are huge and strong walls which are built across rivers to block or control the flow of water reservoirs which are basically the river water collected in artificial lakes is released when the level of water in the river decreases the dams are called as multi purpose projects as they can be used to store water to control flooding to generate hydroelectricity etc students hydroelectricity is the electricity which is produced due to the power of water in motion huge canals are dug to send water from these reservoirs to agricultural areas for irrigation students kalani dam is the oldest dam in india which is built on kaveri river in tamil nadu and Tehri dam is the biggest highest and tallest dam in India which is built on Bhagirathi river in Uttarakhand students water is the only substance which is found in all three different states that is in solid state liquid state as well as in gaseous state water present as ice and snow at the polar ice caps snow covered mountains and frozen glaciers are in solid form water in rivers lakes ponds seas and oceans are all in liquid form whereas water present as steam or water vapor is in gaseous form these states of water can be changed into another state on heating or cooling the process by which the water changes into water vapor on heating is called as evaporation there are certain conditions which increases the rate of evaporation for example water evaporates faster when it is windy 
the same can be understood by conducting a small activity take two similar wet handkerchiefs put one under the fan and the other one in a separate room without switching on the fan the one put under the fan will dry faster water also evaporates faster when it is sunny the same can be checked by placing two similar wet handkerchiefs one in the sun and the other one in the shade the one put outside in sun will dry faster also evaporation is faster in large surface areas the same can be checked by placing two similar wet handkerchiefs at the same place but one in properly spread out condition while the other one in crumpled state the handkerchief which is properly spread out to dry will dry faster due to the large surface area the process by which the water vapor changes into water droplets on cooling is called as condensation like the water droplets formed on the outer surface of the cold water bottle taken out from the fridge the water droplets formed on the inner side of the plate which is put on a pan of boiling water and the dew drops on leaves in winter season are all different examples of condensation students the process by which plants remove excess water through the tiny pores called stomata present on the surface of leaves is called as transpiration transpiration is essentially evaporation of water from leaves of plant students water cycle shows the continuous movement of water within the earth and its atmosphere it is a complex system in which liquid water evaporates into water vapor the water vapor condenses to form clouds and when this cloud becomes heavy due to the accumulation of tiny water droplets they fall back on the surface of earth in the form of rain snow or hail this process is called as precipitation the rain water fills the water bodies and also seeps into the soil increasing the level of ground water this seeping or absorption of water into the soil is called as infiltration this cycle of water goes on endlessly in nature which circulates water between the earth's water bodies atmosphere and land involving precipitation as rain hail and snow filling streams and other water bodies and return to the atmosphere by evaporation and transpiration students though our earth is called as the blue planet but still the availability of fresh water is just 3% and the rest of the water is salty which is trapped in oceans and seas this water is not fit to be consumed so students whenever we consume water we must use it wisely and try not to waste it by keeping the taps open and letting the water go in the drain so students in this way the explanation of this entire chapter is done before we move on to the book exercises i request all my students to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you keep getting the notifications of the upcoming tutorials thank you students let's start with our book exercises question number 1 encircle the correct option first part river or sea water is saline in taste so it is sea water sea water is saline in taste as there is a lot of salt which is dissolved in this water part 2 ground or surface water is taken out by wells so it is ground water ground water can be taken out by wells hand pumps and tube wells part 3 rain fed snow fed rivers dry up in summers so it is rain fed rain fed rivers dry up in summers part 4 water changes into vapors by condensation or evaporation so water changes into vapors by evaporation process part 5 when the clouds become too heavy or light they burst so it is heavy when clouds become too heavy they burst part 2 fill in the blanks first part loss of water from plants is called dash so it is transpiration loss of water from plants is called as transpiration part 2 evaporation is faster in dash surface area so evaporation is faster in large surface area part 3 in dash form water is present as ice and snow at the polar ice caps so it is in solid form 
in solid form, water is present as ice and snow at the polar ice caps. Part 4 Dash are huge and strong walls built across rivers to block or control the flow of water. So it is dams. Dams are huge and strong walls built across rivers to block or control the flow of water. Part 5 A sea is dash than an ocean. So a sea is smaller than an ocean. Question number 3 Define the following. Part 1 Evaporation Answer The process by which water changes to water vapor on heating is called as evaporation. Part 2 Condensation Answer The process by which water vapor changes into water droplets on cooling is called as condensation. Part 3 Saline water Answer The water having high content of salt mixed in it is called as saline water. For example, the water in seas and oceans is saline water and cannot be used for drinking. Part 4 Complete the flow chart for the following. Now children here you can see a flow chart is given. We have to fill the appropriate answers in these boxes. First is natural sources of water. So we all know that the natural sources of water can be broadly classified into three parts. Rain water, ground water and surface water. So in the first two boxes we will write rain water and ground water. Now children here you can see there are four boxes given under surface water. So here you have to write any four sources of surface water. So it can be sea, ocean, river, lake, pond. So you can write any four of them. Part 5. Differentiate between the following. First, ground water and surface water. So the two differences between the ground water and surface water are ground water. This is the water lying below the surface of earth. Surface water. This is the water lying above the surface of earth. Second difference, ground water. This water can be taken out using wells, tube wells and hand pumps. Surface water. This water is available in the form of rivers, lakes, seas and oceans. Second, rain fed rivers and snow fed rivers. Answer. First, rain fed rivers. The rivers which are formed by the rain water are called as rain fed rivers while the rivers which are formed by the melting of glaciers are called as snow fed rivers. Examples of rain fed rivers are Krishna, Kaveri. Examples of snow fed rivers are Ganga and Yamuna. Third, condensation and precipitation. Answer, the process by which the water vapour changes to water droplets on cooling is called as condensation and the process by which the water droplets in the cloud fall back on the surface of earth is called as precipitation. Example of condensation Dew drops on leaves Example of precipitation Rain, hail and snow Question number 6 Answer the following questions First question List the factors that increase the rate of evaporation. Answer. Factors that increase the rate of evaporation are windy, sunny and large surface area. Question number 2. Explain the water cycle with the diagram. Answer. The continuous movement of water in different forms within the earth and its atmosphere is called as water cycle. Following are the different steps involved in the process of water cycle. A. The sun heats the water in the rivers, oceans and other water bodies due to which the water evaporates in the air as water vapours. B. When these water vapours come in contact with cold air, they condense to form drops of water. C. These drops of water join together to form clouds. D. When these clouds become heavy, they fall as rain, snow or hail. This process is called as precipitation. This cycle of water is continuous in nature and so is called as water cycle. Question number 3. What are the conditions which favour evaporation? Answer. Following are the conditions which favour evaporation. A. Water evaporates faster when it is windy. Take two similar wet handkerchiefs. 
put one to dry under the fan and the other away from the sun the one under the fan will dry faster b water evaporates faster when it is sunny take two similar wet handkerchiefs put one to dry in the sun and the other one in shade the one put outside in the sun will dry faster c evaporation is faster in large surface areas take two similar wet handkerchiefs one properly spread out to dry while leaving the other one in a crumpled state the one with the larger surface area will dry faster question number 4 give two examples of evaporation and condensation in daily life answer two examples of evaporation are a steam coming out of a boiling water b water vapor coming out of a hot cup of tea these two are examples of evaporation in our daily life the two examples of condensation are a water droplets formed on the outer surface of the cold water bottle taken out from the fridge b water droplets formed on the inner side of the plate covering the pan of hot soup these two are the examples of condensation let's move on to hots show the process of evaporation connected to salt making from sea water answer for obtaining salt from sea water the sea water is trapped in shallow lakes and allowed to stand there the heat of the sun gradually evaporates the water in the shallow lakes and common salt is left behind as solid this is how the process of evaporation is connected to salt making from sea water so students in this way the explanation and the book exercises of this chapter is done hope you learned something new in today's class do give a thumbs up and don't forget to share this tutorial with your classmates let's meet in the next video until then stay happy and keep learning